Hey fellow investors, British American Tobacco is one of those high yielding European dividend stocks and a proud member of the Noble 30 index. It currently yields 6.4% and it trades at the 52 week high, so the question naturally arises whether now is still a good time to buy shares in this company. Well good news there, their annual results have just been announced this week so we have very accurate data to do our analysis. And that's what I will show you today because in this video I will do a brief stock analysis by looking into their business followed by an assessment of their valuation. Because in the end, as individual stock pickers, we really need to understand what we own, so just buying stocks purely on their price to earnings multiple is not something I would recommend. Having said that, let's get started. Ah, and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos in the future. British American Tobacco is one of those iconic European companies. It was founded in 1902 and manufactures and sells cigarettes, tobacco and other nicotine products. If you go to their website you can see a really nice timeline of their history. But what I can tell you in general is that this is a history full with continuous acquisitions. And this is also the reason why you can't recognize the company today anymore as how it was founded back 120 years ago. And this is in my opinion because of two main reasons. First of all, in 2017, it acquired the remaining shares of American Reynolds for a total price of 49 billion. With that, it became the largest tobacco producer in the world. Secondly, in 2020, the company also really reshaped their strategy, which they called building a better tomorrow. I must confess here, I find it a little bit hypocrite when you're creating cancer producing products. But on the other hand, knowing that many people in the world are smoking, maybe there is something into it. Because this vision in its core is all about reducing the health impact of their business. And what it means for them is that they want to sell less risky products, but also to continue to give the message that combustible cigarettes, so the real traditional cigarettes as we know them, pose serious health risk and that people should not start smoking at all or quit if they are smoking. And people that want to continue to smoke, they want to encourage them to switch completely to some of the new reduced risk alternatives. What is important to know here, you see this little icon here everywhere in their documentation. This has to do with the fact that the FDA has so far declined to agree with this statement in the US. Hence, what they are saying here has not been backed by one of the biggest cigarette selling countries in the world. So knowing this, even if British American Tobacco has a clear intention there, they would still face quite some barriers because generally the regulators are not in favor of tobacco manufacturers. And I actually understand why, because the tobacco industry is far from that. It's still growing rapidly if you think about it with a compounded annual growth rate of 1.8% over the next 6-7 years according to the estimates about the US tobacco market. So what we can observe generally here is that, that although there is a lot of focus on new products still the traditional cigarette is expected to grow. So this is important to understand here that although British American Tobacco wants to focus on this part of the statistics, this one is still continued to expect it to grow. So let's look then into British American Tobacco brands and products. So first of all, they have something called non-combustible products. These are the new category products. We're talking here about vapor, tobacco heating and modern oral. We're also talking here about traditional oral, grizzly and camel's nose. Also, the largest part of the business exists out of combustible cigarettes. Here we're talking about popular brands like Dunhill, and actually you might know them if you are a Formula One fan. They have been often very visible on Formula One cars, Lucky Strike, Pall Mall, Camel. These are really some big, big products that I think many, many people of you know of or grew up with. Either you smoked yourself or your parents were smoking or relatives. It's hard to ignore these kinds of products uh, around you. So there's also a lot of st brand stickiness here, I would say. Once you go with a certain brand, I've seen a lot of smokers staying loyal to it, which also means that they have a lot of pricing power because clearly we are talking about addictions here. And for people to get rid of an addiction, that must happen really a lot typically. It's not easy to quit smoking. I've seen it around me. People often fall back. But having said that, if we take their vision into consideration and they will be focusing more on the new categories, what is really interesting to see here is that Glow, one of their in-house developed products, actually faced quite some headwinds in the United States because Altria and Philip Morris had a product called IQOS, and this product was actually designed based on the patents of British American Tobacco. Good news here because on 30 November 2021, not too long ago, the US International Trade Commission determined that Philip Morris and Altria's IKEOS products infringed two patents owned by Butts Group subsidiaries. Hence, they are not able to sell and import IQS products anymore in the United States. 
This is a big win for British American Tobacco, especially because they have been putting a lot of R&D into this. But hey, this was about the product glow. More good news here, because if we look at views, it has closed the gap with their competition in the United States. You can see here that it's now becoming the leading vaping product in the United States. And remember, United States is a really, really huge market. So overall, British American Tobacco seems to be doing really well with the new product categories. And the reason for that is really their science department. They are investing around 350 million in R&D. And what I like about this is that it's really going back to the core of what this company is about. First of all, and I make often a joke about this, it's an inhation technology company. If you think about it from that point of view, if you really go to that core, you can do a lot with this. Also even when you really wanna reduce the harm and reduce the risk of your customers. The same time, it's also a pharma company because you know they need to do lots of research about their tobacco stuff. And with that, they have been also looking into the production of vaccines, who knows? For now, it's hardly neglectable when we look at the revenue of a company like British American Tobacco. But who knows, maybe in the future this could become something. And at the same time, I just touched on inhalation technology. They also launched their first cannabis vaping product. We know this is popular. Cannabis was in hype two years ago. So who knows, maybe this also becomes a popular product in their product line. These are all like long shots. They might not work out at all, but this is what R&D is for. 10 can fail, if one is successful, you've got a new revenue line. But what I really like about their investments in R&D is that if we look at vapor products, what they are claiming here is that they are at least already 95% less harmful than smoking. And honestly, if we get a large part of the society that's already subject to addictions and smoking, moving towards 95% less impact because of a better alternative in smoking, I think this company is doing well. And we shouldn't take this lightly because in the end, this could hopefully lead, I'm not a scientist here, I'm not either a member of the FDA, but hopefully lead to just many less lung cancer patients in the future because such diseases are really, really horrible. But to conclude, I really like that they have such a focus on the science behind it and it really should allow them to build a better tomorrow according to their strategy. Whether I think it's hypocrite or not doesn't really matter. But if we think about the business in itself, right, I would like to remind you that the new categories that I've been just spending a few minutes about is still only 2 billion of reported revenue in 2021. While at the same time, the total combustibles is still 22 billion. So we're talking about an 8% category mix by new categories. Keep that in mind, please, because there are also different margins when we look at the new categories versus the traditional cigarettes. In other words, there's still a long, long way to go for British American tobacco to really switch here into a healthier alternative for their customers. So far, I would say if we look at it, 42% growth in these categories which is really good. So it looks promising. I like that it's one of those companies that's really in the front line of this supported by a strong vision. So it seems that management is doing a really good job to build their business and to transform their business into a healthier alternative future. But at the same time, we're living now in 2022, February. Let's also have a look at how they are doing financially because in the end, any business needs to make a bottom line profit. And for us as dividend investors, we want to have safe growing dividends. So in my philosophy, it also has to grow its earnings, revenues and cash flows over the years. Otherwise, dividends are typically not safe. At the same time, we're talking here about a 6.4% yielding stock. And often such high yields are raising red flags with many investors. Now, some of the highlights that I would like to show you out of these reports are the following. So revenues currently at 25.6 billion, a slight decline compared to 2020. Operating margin almost 40%, which is really good. It shows just that this is a really profitable business. And if we look at the deleted earnings per share, it's currently almost three pounds, hence a 6% growth. Also very nice in my opinion. But it continues because also they reduced 10% of their debt over the last year and it has now 40 billion pound in debts, which is really important for me because the acquisition of American Reynolds really, really increased their debt load. At the same time, they disappointed us a little bit with the dividend per share growth of just 1%, because with these numbers, I would have expected at least a growth of 6% or something like that. However, there's a catch here because the company announced a 2 billion buyback program for the current year. This is approximately 2.7% of their total market cap right now. So even if they wouldn't be able to increase their absolute dividend payments next year, 
they should still be able to grow the dividend per share by approximately 2.7%, all else being equal. I find this really smart from that point of view because, you know, the cost of their dividends is currently around 6.4%. So buying back some shares like this is actually considered to be more attractive sometimes than increasing the dividend by itself. But having said that, there's another thing that I would like to highlight what I found important in this annual report. And this is about what happened on 29 April 2021 when the FDA reconfirmed its intention to issue a proposed product standard to ban menthol as a characterizing flavor in cigarettes. This is really important. And if this happens, it can really severely hit the bottom line of many tobacco companies. You need to keep a close eye on this. This is one of the biggest risks for me for a company like British American Tobacco if we talk about the beer case of owning this stock but knowing this of course management has built really good experience with the regulators over time and they believe that such a ban is unlikely to be implemented within the next five years knowing how the governments work in the US I would agree with them this is not something that will be done overnight specifically not with all the lobbying going on there that we know is really really strong in the United States of America but if it happens what I really like is that management is now already transparent about the potential impact that this can have to its brands and what we can see for instance here that this will hit approximately four to five percent bottom line in growth and this is something that you as an investor if you want to own this stock need to take into consideration having said that for me these were the main highlights of the annual report so now let's look into what i think this company is worth if you want to invest in it right now okay so looking at british american tobacco we can see that it clearly broke out and it's trading now around 33 34 pounds per share it has been trading two times at this level over the last three years and that was in 2020 in the beginning. Other than that, it all the time seems to have a bottom at around £25 per share. I don't know, it might come back there. I cannot predict the future. What I do like here is that their earnings though, over those all those years in the last decade, have been growing and their free cash flow has exploded. Why is this? The acquisition of Reynolds American in 2017 became effective in the numbers in 2018. However, since then the free cash flow has been flat. What it also means from a cash allocation point of view, you can really see that the Reynolds acquisition was really great because the free cash flow went up. At the same time, the dividends are easily covered. So from my point of view, if you look at this gap, the dividends are, are very, very safe as long as the free cash flow stays at least flat or, or slightly gross. But also from a balance sheet point of view, the acquisition of Reynolds was really great because the equity to shareholders became more than the debt itself. So the debt equity ratio really improved. From that point of view, I find this a brilliant acquisition that they have done four years ago because it's clearly producing a lot of shareholder wealth right now. If we then look at the dividend history, the company has been growing their dividends so far for at least 22 years. In 2011, it was still paying £1.19 per share per year and it's now paying £2.18 per share at a payout ratio of approximately 56%. From that point of view, very nice dividend growth, a little bit flattening out over the last years, but I believe there's enough room to still grow it into the next decade. What is important to know here from a revenue point of view, we can see that the acquisition of Reynolds really boosted their revenue, but at the same time, revenue has been flat since then because they are shifting into these new product categories. Now, other than that, dividend yield currently 6.4%, five-year dividend growth of 4.5%. I like to see that a little bit higher, around 6%, but okay. High yield, low growth, I get it. EPS payout is at 74%, but what I'm really interested in is free cash flow payout here. There are often some one-off things like impairments and such that a company like uh, British American Tobacco needs to do because of litigation and such. We saw already if they will ban mental, this will happen again. This impacts the EPS number. So for a company like British American Tobacco, free cash flow is really a much more cleaner number and specifically because they use a strategy of mergers and acquisitions. From a price to earnings and forward PE and a price to free cash flow, it's all, let's say, around a multiple of 10. And usually you would consider this really cheap. And why is this? I think that everyone hates tobacco. Many indexes and ETFs don't want tobacco stocks into their baskets because, of course, it doesn't really help the ESG requirements or the woke community that doesn't like cigarettes at all. I'm not owning tobacco stocks, actually, full disclosure. My wife doesn't allow me to own them, so I'm, I need to deal with this at home as well. Otherwise, I would have for sure held to my tobacco stocks that I was owning already before 2020, let's say. Last but not least, what I would like to highlight out here is that their credit rating is BAA1. Not too bad, but they need it too good. And we know why. It is mainly to do with the industry they operate in. It's not seen generally by credit rating agencies 
as a powerful business that can grow for multiple upcoming decades. Last but not least, they are still creating value because their return on investment capital is more than the uh, weighted average cost of capital. So we're talking here about 2% value creation at the moment. I would like to see it more like five. That shows me that it's really a high quality business, but okay, I can deal with 2% as well. What we will see is that the return on invested capital should increase if they continue to pay down debt. So conclusion so far is that I think their dividend is very safe. I don't see this dividend being cut, let's say in the next five, six years based on the business analysis that I've done plus the margin of safety that we see when we look, for instance, at the free cash flow payout ratios. But the question then remains is, is now a good time to buy this company? Because the company, as we saw, really went up since last November. It almost grew with like 30% since then. So let's have a look into it. So to calculate the fair value, I'm going to assume a 7.5 billion free cash flow per year as a baseline going forward. Based on that, I believe that the company in the next five years could grow this with 6% and thereafter with 4%. At a discount rate of 10% and a terminal multiple of 10, I believe that the stock should trade around 44 pounds right now. Why a terminal multiple of 10? We just saw that this is approximately the terminal multiple right now for a stock that is in the corner, which many people hate and don't want to have in their portfolio. I don't see the changing in the upcoming five years. Hence the terminal multiple of 10 is for me more than realistic going forward. But hey, if we think a bit more optimistic, maybe the company can grow a little bit quicker with 8% to 5% thereafter. And therefore, you know, maybe they're building better tomorrow will resonate more with the broader stock market going forward. Hence, let's say a terminal multiple of 13. In that case, I believe that the company should trade around 55 pounds right now to consider it being a fair value. If I'm a bit more bearish and let's say that the mental ban in the US really becomes reality, in that case, I think their growth will be less with 4% and 2% thereafter. And of course, the terminal multiple will be lower be because investors will be not willing to spend so much on this company. Hence, the terminal multiple of 8. In that case, I think the company should be trading around 35 to 36 pounds. And as an investor, I believe this is still good news because the share price is currently 33, 34 pounds, which means that even in my most bearish scenario, this company should still be undervalued. All in all, what can I say? I find this company very attractively valued right now. I know that when you look at the price chart, I know that you might think that this company already had quite a run up, which is the case of course, because just last year in November, it was still trading around 25 pounds. Nevertheless, I believe that this company is worth at the moment 44 pounds. We don't look at the back, we look at the future. So in other words, I believe that the company is currently undervalued by about 30%. Having said all of this, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more of this, check the video on the left, which is about a stock that I definitely want to buy more of, or check the video on the right if you want to learn how to do an intrinsic valuation calculation yourself. For now, have a great week ahead.